Let everyone be slow to anger, for your anger does not produce God's righteousness. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. My dear faithful, in the epistle today that we just heard a few moments ago, St. James warns us particularly against a vice that attacks us very frequently and whose consequences are often disastrous. Anger. Let everyone be quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to anger, for your anger does not produce God's righteousness. Noting the importance of St. James' advice, the fathers of the Church have abundantly spoken of the dangers of anger. By exemplification, said, just as there is nothing better than charity, there is nothing lower than anger and rage. Even when something seems useful and necessary, one should never let oneself be carried away by anger. For what reason? Saint Basil answers us, anger is a great evil. It is a sickness of the soul, a darkening of reason, a turning away from God, a forgetfulness of our friends. It is a beginning of war, a source of evils, the root of enmities and discord, the height of misery, a wicked demon, a reckless and pitiful guest, who is shut up in us to de devastate our whole interior and prevent the entrance of the Holy Spirit. What's an accumulation of word to help us understand the problem of anger? And you know, the pagans themselves, as Seneca, called it a momentary madness, capable, uh, since it drives out sanity and right judgment, putting man out of himself, capable of any barbarity. So, it's a problem. It's a grave problem. Anger is a great problem for us. So, let us see how we can avoid anger, how we can fight against anger, especially following the advice of the father of the church. And first, you know, to deal with anger, we must understand what it is and what causes it. Anger is generated, says St. Thomas Aquinas, is generated in us when we are faced with some displeasure. It can be an attitude, a word, an event that bothers us, hurts us, causes causes us some sadness, and faced with this sadness, one can react in two ways. One is depressed, resigned to the evil, or one does not accept it and wants to avenge the displeasure. And this appetite for revenge is anger. Anger, and when I want to, to avenge this word, this attitude, that I didn't like it. And this anger will manifest itself in several ways. First, with thoughts, by hatred against the person who caused us the displeasure. It can be by desire of revenge by desire of evil and joy in the adversity of others, or even by sadness in their happiness. I'm sad because this person who had maybe this bad attitude with me, uh, is happy. Something good is happening to him, so I'm sad. Or in the opposite, I'm happy because he has some problem. 
This is a consequence of anger. So with thoughts, first. Secondly, with words. Anger can manifest itself by, th by words, by insults or curses or harsh responses and also by slander and calumny. And finally, anger can manifest with actions by litigations, fights, damages. A little example, a neighbor irritated me and then I scratched his car to avenge myself. Anger can even cause crimes, as in the case of Alexander the Great. It's quite unbelievable. He killed one of his friends and generals only because he contradicted him. And after that, he was immediately very worried, very sorry about it, but he killed it by anger. He killed him by anger. Anger also makes us avoid reconciliation by spirit of discord. Someone asks for forgiveness, no, I won't forgive you. Can foster impatience, anger can foster impatience, that is a lack of acceptance of penalties and crosses. In this way, anger will cause resistance to divine will, or murmuring, or even disgust of life and desire of death. I want to die. I cannot endure this world, this attitude of my neighbor. So really, I, I, I guess we see that the consequences of anger can be disastrous. And in fact, we see the misdeeds in the newspapers every day. Just open a newspaper. Most crimes or injustices committed are caused by anger. It's obvious. So now let's see how to remedy it. This is the most important part. Now we understand more or less what is anger and what are the causes in our life of anger. How to remedy it. St. Ambrose gives us some very important general advice before we are getting in the details. Some general advice. It is necessary to prevent it, anger, from being generated and to stifle it when it appears. Prevent it, stifle it when it appears. Two strategies. Detailing a little this recommendation, we can see some tricks to restrain anger. And first, to prevent it from being produced. The first strategy is anticipating the occasions. This is very useful. To prevent it from being born in us, we must, according to St. Gregory, foresee the difficulties one may encounter and mentally accustom oneself to them. In this way, when something unpleasant happens, it will bother us much less. Let's give some examples. We know that with such and such a person, there are always difficulties. It is not easy for us to remain calm. Therefore, when we must talk to this person, we need to force it and prepare ourselves mentally for it. Because it will probably not be easy. And I guess all here, we can have some names showing up in our mind. So let's be prepared to the conversation. Another example. We know that when we drive, it is likely that someone will make an inconvenient maneuver, which can provoke in us a movement of anger. It's very often. It happens very often. So when I am going to drive to take my car, first I think about it to prevent anger. So to keep us from anger, it is also very effective to remember our own misery. This is the second point. First, foresee the problem. Second, remember my own misery. Why? Let us not forget that many of our attitudes also annoy our neighbor. In this way, says St. Gregory, 
The knowledge of our miseries will help us to bear with ease those of others. Seeing the beam in our own eye will help us not to get irritated by the moat in the neighbor's eye. It's obvious when we are thinking a little bit that we all are sinners and in some way we all are irritating a little bit our neighbors so it helps us to forgive easier to not giving importance to these little things of every day that can cause anger remember our own misery thirdly we must try to avoid the company of temperamental people in this sense, the book of Proverbs tells us, Do not befriend a wrathful man, nor keep company with a furious man, lest you imitate his ways and give your soul an occasion for ruin. And maybe some of us are thinking, but what to do if we are obliged to frequent such a person? Because of work, because maybe... He's a member of the family. I can run away from my family, from my husband, from my wife, from my children. What can I do? In this case, we must avoid any occasion to alter his mood. This is a secret. We must help the other person with our own gentleness. And in this, we have a magnificent example in the life of Saint Monica, the mother of Saint Augustine. St. Augustine refers in the book of his Confessions, speaking of his father, he was, moreover, on the one hand extremely affectionate, on the other extremely vehement. But Monica was careful not to oppose her angry husband, husband not only with deeds, but not even with the slightest word. And only when she saw him already calm and composed and judged it opportune, she corrected him of what he had done, if eventually he had become more angry than was just. Thus, despite having an angry husband, Saint Monica could say that she never had any quarrels, because she always waited for the storm to pass to talk to her husband and help him change. The great secret of Saint Monica. When we have to live with some person who have an inclination to anger, remember that. Never, never provoke anger. Let pass the storm and after that talk with a person. Not when the storm is big. It's the worst thing to do. Let's wait. So we have to prevent anger to be produced. But also, we have to restrain anger when it shows up. Because sometimes we cannot prevent it. it. It just shows up in our life. It catches us of God. So what can we do in this moment? Here are three more tips to help us. First, as far as possible, we must run away from the object, place, or person that causes anger in us. Because with a single spark, we can start a big fire. So, I'm feeling anger in me. I have to flee to avoid the situation, the person, the place, the object. I have to avoid, I have to flee. The big question is, Father, I cannot flee always. Of course. So, if it's not possible to flee, here is a golden rule. Do not speak. Do not judge. Do not act while under the influence of anger. Do not speak, do not judge, do not act while the influence under the influence of anger. This is vital, golden rule.
because our judgment is disturbed and we will certainly err. We must wait until we have regained our calm before speaking, judging or acting again. And this is a very important rule that will prevent us from many failures and problems. <clears throat> and we know that. You know, St. Francis of Sals said that every time, every time, he left him, he left himself be dominated, influenced by anger. After that, he would worry about it. He would have been sorry about it, have been sorry about it, every time, without exception. So remember that. I'm feeling anger. What can I do? Nothing. Not speaking, not judging, not acting. And maybe you will think, I have something to do, Father. I have to do something. Okay, so third, when we are feeling anger, we must place ourselves in the presence of God, of Mary of the guardian angel. This is the only thing we have to do. When we are feeling anger, going to Jesus, going to Mary, going to my angel. Just take your crucifix in your hands and look at him and ask him for calming the storm. Ask him for meekness and Jesus will give it to you. He will calm down the storm it's always infallible. Jesus calmed the storms. This is the only thing we have to do. Not judging, not acting, not speaking. Going to Jesus and he will calm the storm. You know, we have this magnificent prayer. Jesus, meek and humble of heart, make my heart like unto thine. This is what we have to do. Praying Jesus. Are you faithful by way of conclusion? Let us end with some words of St. John Chrysostom on meekness. This magnificent virtue that will help us not to be overcome by anger. Meekness is a response to anger. It's a virtue that allows us, allows us to contain ourselves, to remain calm. There is nothing stronger than meekness, says St. John. It places our soul in a continuous serenity. It places it in the harbor, safe from winds and storms. It allows it to taste ineffable delights. That is why our Lord said, Learn from me to be meek and humble of heart, and you will find rest for your souls. Because this virtue is the most effective means to attain this happiness. Therefore, I beg you, I beg you, to appreciate this virtue of meekness more than everything else and not, to, and not to let any bitterness enter your heart, but to keep it always in an attitude of perfect sweetness and gentleness. Jesus, meek and humble of heart, make our hearts like unto thine. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.